Diagnosing and repairing old machines like the Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum is easy. Oh, really? No, no, honestly, it's really easy. All you have to do is watch all the YouTube videos about how other people repaired theirs and just do what they did. As a bonus, you can cut out all the bits where they chased red herrings all around the shop. Record yourself doing it and throw the footage up on YouTube and you'll also be a hero. What could be simpler? The key to this lark is being able to find the fault using the tools you have available. Having the knowledge to diagnose it in a way that leads you quickly to the broken component is the difference between someone starting out on their journey and someone who's been at this for years. So far on my personal C64 repair journey, I've not really been tested, till now. This machine, which I've affectionately named Donald, is broken. But Donald is broken in a tricky way. The symptom, a black screen, is not unusual in itself. But the next step is plugging in a dead test cartridge, which will usually give you a good indication of what might be wrong. In this case, it gives mean? a pink screen. A quick Google search yields little result. Most of the top hits talk of defective memory. The dead test manual itself doesn't mention this state at all, which can mean only one thing. Donald is broken. Oh, really? On my previous Commodore 64 repairs, I'd been fortunate that the fault had either been obvious or simply one of the yeah. first things you would check anyway, the PLA, for instance. But as you'll see, simple and obvious don't really make an appearance here. The only chips socketed are this one CIA, SID, the VIC-2, and this chip down here. I've removed the SID and now I'm removing the CIA. Dead test doesn't require the presence of the two CIA chips or any of the ROMs, something I should have been thinking about as you will soon see. So I can remove the socketed CIA to make sure it isn't causing the problem. Still hanging on. This turned out to be harder than it should have. Oh, oh, that socket. Look at that socket. It's... The socket has slightly corroded to the point it's reluctant to let go of the chip. There's one there. There's one there. One there. One there. They've all come out with the legs of the chip. So what's that done to it? Same screen. Okay, the CIA didn't make a difference. The only other easy chip to check now is the VIC-2. Even though the display is just a black screen, I can see there's a signal being output, so I don't expect this to be the problem. But it's worth eliminating the simple stuff before you get to more drastic measures. Working. And that VIC-2 is working fine in my test machine. So what next? I'm going to have a poke around and I'll bring you back. Ew. Most of the address lines looked okay. Some of the data lines looked a little bit suspect. D0 and D2. Um, so I might revisit those later. You should! They could be uh, a symptom rather than the cause. Go with the cause! Weird. You're weird. Oh, I'm not so sure now. It might be the CPU. Ugh. No, but it's not a bad shout anyway. In the order of things that might go wrong, the CPU is quite high up on the list, just behind the PLA and MT RAM. I spend a while probing around, trying to work out what was meant to look like what before. I'm now leaning towards the CPU. Okay, so the dead test was throwing me for a loop because I thought the chip select lines a chip select yeah, lines were all stuck high, but when I um, realised that when you've got the dead test in, disables the ROMs. So <laughs> you won't get any chip select. Well, I don't think you, you shouldn't. Clever lad, have a cookie. But they are all behaving the same as the working one. Um, the CPU, I've scoped all the lines on the CPU. Uh, ignore these outside ones, that was a previous attempt. Um, and what we've got here is the rewrite, re the ready, the IRQ are all stuck high and on, <clears throat> on the healthy one, they're not. Um, we've also got some messy data lines here. That, that data line, data line two, 
is kind of low. It look, looks low and, and nasty. I'll show you that actually. Pause there. Right, so this is pin two, which is the ready line. That should, no, it's not switched on. It's not even plugged in. Dopey. Right, so that should have like a trace that goes like that. And it's not. And this is pin three, which is IRQ. That also should have a trace that goes like that. It's not. Uh, and I think that pin 38, which is the rewrite line, has, is supposed to have like data. Um, but it doesn't. What else have we got? 37, 36. Uh, just looks, I don't know, that could be, that could be all right. It just looks messy. But this one, 35, that really looks bad. Like 37. That's peak to peak is 3.3, 3.5 volts. Everything else on that side is okay, apart from down here, uh, pin 22 is address line 14 that's stuck high and 23 address line 15 is stuck high pin 15 let's just go from the bottom pin 20 is address line 13 that's stuck high and pin 19 is address line 12 that's stuck high uh, 11 looks all right ish yeah, that looks all right. Ten is all right, and then we've got nine. That's supposed to have data on it. That's high, and that's stuck high. That's uh, that's eight. So we've got a fair few pins there. I wonder if there's something that's in common with all of those. This is another decent shout. If there was, then it would be easy to track down the exact fault. But the problem with a complex system of interconnected parts is that all the parts can affect all the other parts. And on top of that, any of those parts can go wrong in a variety of ways. Now, as I remove the CPU, I can tell you this is not the problem. But I don't regret removing it. I still think it was a good call. It was the first chip I scoped that had all the bad signals, so I can forgive myself for thinking it might be the problem. Yeah, the legs of this CPU have been really chopped down. Badly. Look all right on this side, might have all been knocked over to my right. And this is the first moment I encounter something quite unusual. I won't spoil it yet, but I will say that neither I, nor Commodore Lad, who's been inside more C64s than anyone I know, have ever seen anything like this before. It's a weird one. What's going on with this one? Oh, look at all those legs come free. Some boards are easy to work on. The solder on this one has mostly all been removed with one pass. This is good and should mean that removing the chips is easy. Should. <laughs> Most of them have come free. Great. Literally fallen out. There's even a big lump of solder there. Don't worry, no traces were damaged. Okay, they're shortish, but they're not terrible. Like your mum. They are terrible. You need to look closer. I wonder if this will do it. I'm doing this because with the naked eye, I can see there are unusual lumps on the ends of some of the legs. Some of these have been notched on the end. It's really weird. It's like a bit more meaty to 
I'm trying to straighten out the ends of these pins, thinking they are just notched. They're like hooked. Exactly. Put that in a socket, it's just going to rip the socket out. Yes, it will. Is it solder? Nope. Okay, off camera, I'm putting the ends of the legs of this CPU into a vise and crushing them flat, which kind of works a bit. Ah, it's the legs, the ends of the legs are folded over. Aha! See that one there? Oh my god. So that's what's happened to that CIA. I bet that CIA is the same. Oh, come here. Yeah, no, it's not. Not at all. <laughs> Mr. Shearer yourself. <laughs> well, to be fair, it would have made sense. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just whittling the CPU down. Just carving myself a nice Zilog Z80 from this old bit of metal and sand. I don't know how they've managed to bend the, just the ends over. Well, why? Why would you do that? That's a really good question. It turns out all the major ICs in this machine have had their legs bent over, or to be more accurate, folded over. Was this done to keep them from falling out of the board while they were soldered in place? I really don't know. Oh, I bet these are bent the other way. So not only are they bent over, they're soldered together. Two halves of the bend are soldered together. It's good. I think I'm going to be happy with that now. At least they shouldn't rip my socket open. Is it going to go in first? If it goes in, it's going to come out. Power. So the task here was to test this CPU. Well, that looks a bit broke. If this is the broken part that was causing the total lockup of the system, that would be awesome. <laughs> Do you know what? I wonder if we get a pink dead, screen, dead test screen. That would be lovely if we did. Getting it right on the first chip always feels good. Come on, be pink. And it looks like we're on to a winner. It's not pink. Doesn't it? It's actually black and it looks like it's running. No. Why is dead test not working? Hmm. Wait, are those bad CPU pins just not making contact? Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Language. Huh. Uh, Indeed. Oh well, the hunt continues. The CPU's right. Damn it. Ah, uh, damn it. First, I need to fit a new socket for the CPU. Can everybody see? Right. 
Right, before I go any further, I'm taking the PLA out. It's the next most likely thing to have failed, especially as this one is a MOS one. It's another thing that has all the bad signals attached to it, so again, I feel this is justified. That one is, that's just a nasty one, that is. Oh, if this doesn't pod trace, I'm going to be very surprised. to remove some from the top there. Yep, big thick trace. And in there. I love the C64 layout. Being able to get to the sides of the top side of the chips makes getting the desolder braid in there much easier. They're a joy to work on. The only issue here, these are all free now, is these bent over legs. So now I'm discovering that all the legs on the PLA are also bent over. This makes me go super slow removing it. Even if all the solder is removed, one of those hooked legs could easily rip out a trace or more. Suspect PLA in the test machine. What do you reckon? Well, I know what's going to happen, but no spoilers for our viewers. It's going to work. Ah, oh, damn it. Ah, oh, bloody PLA's all right. Yeah, that was a bit of a punch in the soft bits. <laughs> At this point, I knew the rest of the options all presented fairly equal chances of being the right one. There was very little to go on, so it was looking like okay. it would come down to a good guess in the end. Damn it. <clears throat> right, little. I would need to get rid of this socket. This socket is junk. It's got pins, it's got um, connections in there that have pulled out with the, um, the pins on the CIA. I don't know, they actually look all right, but for whatever reason, that's knackered. Without a working CIA in its socket, I might be seeing a symptom of that missing rather than a fault. Had a bit of a blockage with the desolder gun and at the start I did a few of the pins with the engineer hand pump while I waited for the gun to cool down. As much as I love the engineer pump, it just doesn't compare to the station. I had to redo every one of those pins with the station. Oop. A rusty socket. Must have been stored somewhere quite damp there's rust at the top of those somehow corrosion's got in into there for good measure I went over all the legs of the CIA with a glass fibre pen Doing this on a paper towel is highly recommended, unless you like bits of glass in your fingers. P 
Perfect. Straight in the bin. Put your hands on there and you bloody agony for days. Right, quick catch up. Here is where we stand so far. Place the socket. That was all right. No change in behavior. Uh, no change on the address lines or the data lines. I'm moving away from the, the address lines because they go everywhere. Um, they go through these two chips first. Uh, the More of the ones that were faulty were on U13, but that I took that out and it's fine. Um, I reinstalled it without a socket. Sue me. Right, the data lines, the one that I was having a problem with, I'm pretty sure is D2. And D0. And that goes to uh, U22. So that, I think, I think I should take that out. At this point, I've examined this schematic, searching for different places the data lines visit on their way around the board. And there are many places, as well as the CPU, PLA, memory, and various logic chips. They also appear in the CIA and all the ROM chips. Without any of the chips burning up or displaying unique signals on the scope, it's almost impossible to know which of these has gone faulty. All I can really do is guess based on which ones are probable. Okay. Um, so U21 and U22. U21, U22 are data lines D0 and D2. They're the ones that were causing problems. So I reckon those two chips are bad, but the data lines also go through all of the ROMs, so D0, D2 there, D0, D2 there, D0, D2 there. <clears throat> and they go through the CIAs, and they go through um, U26, uh, all sorts of places they appear. So it could be, it could be anything. Yeah. I really need an A3 printer. I think the easiest thing is to RAM first. Don't stop popping out ROMs. It is. They have less pins and are simple to remove. They are also a common cause of failures. Another reasonable guess. If you look at the schematic, data line 0 goes to U21 and data line 2 goes to U22. With these chips being so close to each other on the board, it gives strength to the argument they could be the fault. Ooh. What do we think? So it's a four one six four goes in this one. Ah, oh, damn it, it's going to work. It is. That's fine. At this point, I was becoming a little disheartened. Wondering if I would ever be able to fix this without pulling it completely to bits and testing it one component at a time. Less confident now, so this one next. And then the CIA. Then the ROMs, then start taking everything out. So, what's the plan of action? I think... I don't know, I'm tempted to take the CIA out. Let's take the CIA out. Right, I'm going to turn you off because you don't really need to see all of this. Okay, soldered all moved. Let's Another chip with hooks for clean. legs. If this was taken out by someone using the wrong tools, this board would be destroyed in the process. It does no have doubt. some weird legs on it again, though. I'm wondering if it's got some here. Yeah, that one's folded over as well. And that one. Weird. Right, so with dead testing, this should just show in a RAM error if, this, if that was the problem. So 
So the test here is to see if it still shows the pink screen with Ready? dead text. Clear. Pink screen. And it Damn. does. It's not CIA. I'll check that CIA in a working board. Want to see those weird legs up close? Right. Now I want to show you these legs. They look pretty normal from here, don't they? I'll try not to show you my nails. And that one sticking out there is not so normal. But when you look at them this side, or from this angle. Just one of those really weird things. Well then, things aren't quite so normal. That is folded over. So it's that and that and that. This one was folded over but obviously got dragged out. That's folded over, that's folded over, that's folded over and that's snapped off. Does anyone have any idea why these are like this? They're not folded Seen anything over. like it before? Please leave a comment if you know. On the other side. Why? The only way I've found to deal with these is to use a really sharp knife. I don't know if you can see all of these bits here. That's all the ends of the legs. Uh, I got a knife and just went along and straightened them all out and managed to... The solder is just not very strong so I managed to just pull the legs off, the, the, the bent over parts of them off for the most part or straighten them and then they just ended up pulling off anyway they're, where they're folded over the fatigue is quite bad so if this doesn't go in a socket I can always just solder it straight back to the board To test the CIA which is in there I've brought back that C64 from the last video so it went into the socket with a bit of a crunch and it tests fine Oh it's good to me Right, now we have both CIAs in sockets. What else could it be? Colour Ram next. Again, I felt good about my thinking on this one. It's a decent shout. Yeah. I don't have a machine with the Colour Ram socketed, so instead I'll just scope the data lines with the chip removed and see if they're the same. And they are. It's not that. Okay, quick update. I've re-socketed these two Ram chips um, that I took out. Both of those tested fine. Um, I'd, this was already socketed. Uh, we put new sockets in the CIAs. One of them was already socketed. Uh, I've taken the CPU and the PLA out. It all tested fine. I've taken the color ROM RAM out. That tested fine. That's over there. Um, but this is a different one in. It does give slightly different signals on some of the data lines from the from the VIC two. But there's still this funky um, half a signal on data line 0 and 2. Um, and the only places left, so like these logic chips don't have it. Um, maybe there's a multiplexer down here or something that... Um, I should check that first. But I'm suspecting one of the ROMs now. <laughs> it's kind of got to be something like that because... I've changed everything else. Right, I think I'm going to take out this ROM first and then I'm going to take out this one and then I'm going to take out this one and then if it's none of them I might try taking out you... is that 26 and you 16 I think. Next are uh, the next ones that are connected to the data bus. I might be chasing a red herring. Who knows? I don't know. But anyway, I'm not going to record all of this because it's just going to take too long. And my hands are freezing cold, so you don't want to see me shivering on camera. Goodbye. All right. <laughs> okay, that's tightened up properly now. 
Okay, this is try number one. I've I've um, I've chosen this one because I left it on for about 10, 15 minutes and I felt these and my hands are freezing, it's so cold in here. Um, and this one was very slightly warmer than these two. These were stone cold and this one was just slightly warmer. And that's all I based it on. It also, this I was drawn to this one because it it's these two are shiny and this one is not. I don't know why that makes any sense, but hey mate, thank you. Cheers. Yeah. Amazon man knows where I live. Yes, Lee. That's how addresses work. I don't know if these legs are bent over like the other one, so I don't want to... Come on. Hey. Yep. They're all bent over. I do not want to take any more chips out of this board. Right. So... Have dead testing. Let's um, pop in the video. Cross your fingers, but no pink screen. No pink screen. Everything is there. Everything in here. In short. Go. There's no pink screen. No pink screen. Yes! Come on! Come on, give me yes! Come on! Well then, that wasn't so bad after all. Beauty. You only had to eliminate nine other chips first. Oh, I'm so lucky! <laughs> I know there will be some experts that will watch this and think, I would have gone straight for the character ROM. I'll let it run through that test. <laughs> Hopefully, all the RAM's alright as well. Come on! I'd very much like to know how you would have reached that conclusion based on the information available, which was barely any at all. CIA's accounting up all right, so far. Rem's okay, cool. Just that, you test the seed. Watch at the top, we're good to go. Yes! Right, the last thing I want to check before I put this away, actually two things I want to check. Uh, one is I want to see what those data lines look like. Um, once Now that this has been repaired, so pin three and five, I think it was. Uh, on the CPU had data lines D1 and D2, no D0 and D2. See what they look like compared to the, when it was bad. And I'm gonna put the uh, test harness that Lee, S Lee Smith from off of Lee Smith's workshop sent me and make sure everything is okay for the first time. The only thing I'm missing is serial port dongle. Uh, so I won't be able to test that, but I'll make one of those at some point. The data lines now. So pin, 40, 39, 38, 37 is date line zero. That's looking good. 36 is date line one, which was fine. 35 was date line two, which is now looking great. Hunky dory. Cool. It's nice to see the before and after, isn't it? This one is super stiff. Hey! Hot 
Locks are good. Sound is good. There we go. Thanks for the entertainment, Donald. You've been a blast. The case, despite looking like a duck's beak, wait, Donald you thought I meant a different users. Donald, is in really good condition with strong case clips and no broken posts inside. But we're done here, Don. Time for you to leave. You've been bigly. Now get out. Yeah, I think I'm done.